welcome to the Women's Wellness Podcast, where we interview experts in various fields with the goal of empowering women to make informed decisions about their health, life, and family. I'm your host, Amy Jane Smith, and I would like to thank you for tuning in today. So get comfy while I introduce our next guest. Hello and welcome to the Women's Wellness Podcast. My name is Amy and I'm your host and today I am excited to introduce Hazel who is going to be talking to me or us about prolapse and her experience with prolapse. So Hazel experienced a prolapse with her first child and has spent a little while trying to figure out what to do, how to heal and I would like to hands the mic over to her and just have her tell you her story and if it resonates with anybody out there then you know you're not alone and you're always welcome to reach out and chat with myself so without further ado welcome hazel thank you so much for joining me today i know it's a big it's a big thing to talk about so i really appreciate you taking the time it's good to be here so you wrote, you told me a little bit about your story and you are a past client of mine. So I thought I know, but other people don't know your story and how you got to where you are now. So why don't you share a little bit about yourself? Okay. Um, so when I had my first child, I was nervous leading up to the birth as most people are and um, hoping it would all go well, but knowing you never know until you get there. And yeah, and then in the end I ended up having, well, my son got, did get stuck against my pelvis, which made the, the end or the pushing quite long, it was just over two hours. But aside from that, the birth went really well. Okay. And um, my body coped really, really well. And I didn't need, any interventions of any sort oh, and good. which I was about very relieved yeah. really um, and so I went off with my son to my coffee group and mums and bubs groups and friends and things and talked about the birth and mm -hmm. everyone was like wow that's perfect natural birth that's fantastic <laughs> and that was great and then sort of two or three weeks later <laughs> yeah. I started to feel um, sort of prolapse symptoms and I sort of had a bit of an inkling what it might be yeah um, and so I asked my midwife about it and she confirmed that it did sound like a prolapse and she was very casual about it just like oh yeah yeah that sounds like that no big deal kind of vibe to things Meanwhile, I want to hear when it's a new experience for you that you yes. don't know what it is and you've never experienced it before. It's a bit yeah. flippant, really. <laughs> Meanwhile, what I didn't manage to actually tell her at the time, I was busy thinking about how years ago I'd sort of vaguely been told bits and pieces of my grandmother's story about a prolapse and she had four kids I don't quite know when it turned up yeah. and surgery that didn't go well and lifelong problems from the surgery and possibly pain and just really sort of bad scenario yeah. and that was pretty much my prior knowledge of prolapse and here's my midwife going oh yep yep just um don't go to see the doctor just yet wait until six weeks after the birth because sometimes it goes away meanwhile i'm just yeah feeling dreadful so um, there for another four weeks going now yeah. What? yeah and it was also coming up to christmas and new year period and i knew that getting in to see the doctor would be oh, tricky yeah. and all that as well so it was affecting me at that time with, with my newborn um uh going for a walk so I would start to feel it come on more and or even just uh, ended up if I just walk my son around the lounge to calm him down which worked really well yeah. for him it would worsen my symptoms and so there were times when I would um, be choosing 
whether to calm him down in the best way that I knew or not to because I knew it would affect me so much. Oh, gosh. Um, and so before we go a bit further, um, would you be able to describe what those symptoms were for those mm -hmm. who might not know but might have an inkling uh, just to give them an idea? Yeah, basically, it felt like, um, like I was wearing a tampon that was sitting where I could still feel it. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, and so if it got worse, then I could feel it more. Um, okay. Yeah. Kind of like, kind of like, yeah, I mean, I, I, I know that feeling well. So <laughs> kind of like you put the tampon in and it's not quite there. It's sitting skew with. Yeah. It's just kind of slipping out kind of feeling like it's going. Yeah. Falling down that kind of feeling. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So that's what it was feeling like. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So when you were carrying him, it felt, it felt worse. It felt more uncomfortable and more just. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I would feel more of that feeling and sort of my knowledge of prolapse being something falling. I didn't want to make it worse. <laughs> no, no. So what did you, what did you do from there? Because your, your midwife has just gone, oh, yeah, no, deal with it. You'll be fine. Um, and Christmas is coming up and you're worried about the best way to calm your newborn baby when you're a first time mum and everything's yep. all uh, already. Um, <laughs> yeah. Where, what was your next process? What was your next step? Uh, so I booked in and went to see a doctor at five weeks after the birth because okay. I thought there's no way this is getting better right now. It's getting worse. Okay. Um, <laughs> Good on you for that. So got in and went to see the doctor. And um, she was a doctor who had seen now and then before and I just sort of knew that her personality and mine just – I found it hard to feel comfortable with, but she's a female doctor, so that was better. Yeah. So she examined me. And the first thing that she said was, oh, that's a bad prolapse, which didn't help how I was feeling. <laughs> Gosh, now, okay, I'm just pausing there. This, um, so anyone who is listening to this, there is no video, and I just dropped my head in my hands then. <laughs> Uh, oh my gosh yeah mm. so I can't remember if it was then that I burst into tears or once we sat down again to talk about it but um I see he was in tears pretty quickly no doubt and, yeah so again she reassured me and was like the midwife this is fine it's not a problem we can do things about this and then she reassured me by telling me about her 74 year old client of hers whose uterus fell out on the golf course and she's fine now oh, great yeah that that's really <laughs> what you want to do so you're all right because yeah, your uterus is where i relate to um yeah. <laughs> and not something i'm not learning yeah <laughs> like definitely not in your 70s and yep nobody's idea of having something that needs fixed is when it falls out on the golf course. Yes. You, an internal organ falling out. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. She's the only thing without warning because she's playing golf. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's mind blowing. Mm. Oh, it makes me fizz. Oh. <laughs> uh, Compose myself. Carry, um, carry on. Carry on. <laughs> so Yeah, so she put in a referral. Okay, good. Yeah, you got a referral. Well, uh, an urgent referral even, but again, this That's is Christmas good. New Year period. Yeah. Um, to um, see a pelvic physio. Mm -hmm. And so that was going to take, that took about another month. I think it took about a month until I heard about booking and then another few weeks until I had the appointment. So... Meanwhile, you're crossing your legs while you... It's just about, just about three baby, months yeah. since the birth. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the advice that the doctor gave me was um, to not sort of aggravate things and take it easy and wait for the appointment. 
um, yeah, and as you say, meanwhile, I'm lifting my baby and yeah, yeah, and Did it got to the you point. Any of, ideas? Any tips on how not to aggravate it? Um, no. If I found it getting worse, don't do that anymore. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it got to the point. I think while I was waiting for the um, pelvic physio appointment, it got to the point that it got to the point that I went for a walk one day, tried to go for a walk, got three houses up the road and turned around and went back because I was feeling uh, the symptoms so much and yeah, look, well, I am not supposed to be aggravating this, but I can't leave the house. So basically you've, you've got a, what, four month old baby by the stage, three, four month old baby. Yep. And you've been told not to lift him, not to hold him, not to, uh, live your life. I, I could lift him, but as sort of was up to me to see what I felt was okay for my body. But again, yeah. I didn't know very much, no. and I didn't know how close things were to just dropping out <laughs> or not. No. Um, yeah, so I did in this time before the pelvic physio, I did go back to the doctor and happened to see a different doctor and just asked had a bit of a chat about it mm -hmm. and asked about a few things there yeah um and um i also asked about whether it was okay or inadvisable to have sex yeah at this point and the doctor said uh no maybe not until it's better oh which again it could be never mine is my grandmother's story of it was never better. So hang on, what? <laughs> it yeah. seems like yeah. Didn't really help. <laughs> no. No. Yeah. So mm. so far so bad. Yeah. Is there yeah. is there light coming at the end of this tunnel? I know there's light somewhere along this story. Yeah. <laughs> where did you so, where did you go from there? I feel like I should have been sitting down for this. <laughs> got to got to see the pelvic physio eventually and oh, she yes. was good. so lovely. Really lovely. She checked me internally and really knew what she was on about because that's her job. Um yeah. and discovered it was it's not my uterus anyway, it's a front wall prolapse. Okay. And yeah. it, wasn't as bad as the doctor thought she sort of saw why the doctor might have thought it was worse but mm. wasn't too I suppose bad. if <laughs> if you're lying on your back and it's a front wall prolapse gravity would make it probably appear worse yeah maybe yeah so a front wall prolapse for those listening mm. um can also be called a sister seal um, which is a pushing, a lowering or descending of the bladder that tilts into the wall of the vagina. So it kind of pushes towards that. And it can affect, um, it can affect urination. How did you get on with actually going to the toilet? Um, I didn't notice any problems. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So where did, where did she go? How did you get on with the rest of your appointments? Um, so the pelvic physio, she got me doing Kegels and she checked that I was doing them correctly. Good. Um, which I was to start with, so that's really reassuring that I could go home and continue doing them correctly. Yeah. Was that with an internal check? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Good. So was, it gave me a lot of confidence that I would be doing things the right way. Yeah, because you um, don't want to be doing it and bearing down. Mm. That would just make things worse. So yeah, that's really good. Internal checkups are gold mm. standard. Yeah, that's good. Brilliant. Um, and she advised me to do the do ten um, long kegels. So hold them for up to ten seconds, if possible. Yeah. Um, ten of those followed by ten quick ones, mm -hmm. short ones, and to do that once a day. More's great, but she's only asking for once a day. Mm -hmm. um, because even just that can have an effect and she said that if she doesn't overdo it then people tend to actually stick to doing it better 
but she's so right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> she said do it five times a day. Yeah, yeah. I'd just be overwhelmed and what maybe, maybe do it once. So. Yeah. Yeah. And so doing it once and then if you do it twice, well you feel like a superstar. Yeah. <laughs> you do. Yes. I really like your Winning. approach. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like a good approach. Mm. How did that feel? How how did you get on with those? Did you notice improvements? Um, I did. Um, so I was really good doing it every day. It worked yes. out. And, yeah. <laughs> and I did start to notice that it was getting, um, my symptoms were going away and I could go for walks without it worsening or could go further before I felt the symptoms more again. Good. Um, so that was really promising. I can't remember how long it was between that and a second appointment with her. It was probably a few months, but by the time I went back to her, um, I wasn't, generally wasn't feeling the symptoms so long as I kept up the exercises. Okay. Um, every day, yeah. Um, but in between there, so in between two appointments with the pelvic physio, mm -hmm. um, she also referred me to, um, to get a pessary fitted. All right. Mm. Um, cause yeah, the, at the first appointment, the pelvic physio asked me sort of how distressing was it to me? And yeah. so I talked about how I couldn't, found I couldn't do everything I needed to for my son and I couldn't just go for a, even a short walk and that mm -hmm. that was very distressing to me to not be able to do those things even though she was finding that the prolapse wasn't too bad medically it yeah. did affect me personally emotionally yeah. a lot that's it and everybody experiences things differently yeah so, yeah, so it was great that she the uterus fall out on the golf course and just pick it up and carry on and go, oh, I better go to the doctor. Someone else <laughs> might feel it a little bit. There's nothing there and it could be huge. Like mm. everything. And then there's in between as well. Like yeah. having, having that sensation of something falling down is never normal. So mm. it's really good that you actually went and got it sorted out. Mm -hmm. mm. There's so many people oh, would have done. Um... Got one thing. Oh yes, yes, carry on. Um, before the first pelvic physio appointment, I was actually mm -hmm. talking with a really good friend, and she's had two children, and I mentioned it to her. I hadn't mentioned it to many people. Yeah. And she said, "Oh my gosh, I had that too." And I think for both exactly. of us, it was especially for me it was such a relief to talk to someone else someone who I related to mm. um similar age and everything mm. and um and talking to her she told me her story and it just gave me some idea of what was what lay ahead for me yeah. because before seeing the public physio I really didn't know much and I knew I would should not google it so I didn't very good <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Dr. Google, doesn't matter what it is, you can have a splinter in your finger and all of a sudden you're dying. <laughs> like just don't, don't Google it. Don't Google it. It's bad for you. Mm. But that's but that's good that you'll be able to find somebody else to talk to. Usually. That's really helpful. Yeah. 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 So then saw the pelvic physio. The pelvic physio um, referred me to get a pessary um, and also talked about what was happening a bit more and gave me the exercises. Mm -hmm. um so exercises were going well i went in to get fitted with a pessary and that went well yeah um they yes it had a check and gave me probably a fairly fairly standard sort of pessary and checked the size and yeah Mm -hmm. fitted it in for me and I had to go with that um unfortunately once I got home and very quickly within a day or two it was coming out it was sitting too low oh, and uh, really? yeah so I phoned them up and said look this is happening and they got me back in oh, yeah? really quite quickly okay. um 
and then I saw um, a wonderful nurse um, who specialises in sort of checking up on ladies with PSRAs, and she's just the kindest person ever. Um, oh, that's what you need, eh? Yeah, yeah. And um, and so with her, she got out a whole kit of um, different PSRAs, different sizes, and <laughs> <laughs> we tried a couple. And, yeah. Um, and adjusted the size and she sent me off with, with another one mm -hmm. and um, to try out. And so having the piece in it, um, yeah, it helped things feel a bit more comfortable. Yeah. Um, could tell that right away. Mm -hmm. um, the second piece did stay in better, but I ended up getting a lot of trouble with constipation from it. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So... Is it a bit too firm or a bit too... Hmm. Is it kind of propping up the back passage as well a bit? Well, yeah. Yeah. And so I did... Uh, sort of COVID started to hit in and lockdowns somewhere around this point in the process. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> just put so a I had a phone... Yeah, yeah. Had a phone appointment with the pessary nurse again and had a chat about that and she said to just um yeah just sort of good bowel health and um sort of kiwi fruit derived um sort of you kiwi know, fruit seems to be the milk. miracle fruit of choice when it comes mm. to constipation anybody asks about constipation not. kiwi yeah. fruits that's the first thing people say <laughs> yep <Yeah. laughs> Um, except I have not been eating those because I was not eating those at the time either because my son um, could potentially have a um, allergy to them and wow. it's not one we'd be able to see he would have to be able to tell us what his throat was feeling like so um, yeah. wasn't, I wasn't eating with breastfeeding I wasn't going to no, eat any of the going through I wasn't really sure if it no. would but it's not going to risk it no, that's um, so I got stuck into prunes. Um, <laughs> um, Did that work? Uh, really, really slowly, eventually. Okay. Um, but yeah, I took the pessary out and yeah. thought that sort of clear everything out and then it would be all right and I could try the pessary again. But actually, my body disagreed and just decided that constipation was going to stick around for a while. Right. Um, so it was quite a while and I just wasn't keen to put the pessary back in and sort of make anything worse. So that mm. sort of lapsed in the end. Yeah. Um, and I decided with the exercises, I was actually going pretty well, so long as I did them. And there was one yeah. point in particular that I lapsed on those and the symptoms did come back. <laughs> um, right. Yeah, because the other thing with prolapse, which... I think my friend told me, or oh, the midwife sort of alluded to with the wait until six weeks thing. Yeah. But then my friend told me, and the pelvic physio told me that um, all the hormones that are in your body after birth, and then it's still if you're breastfeeding, they actually, um, I think it, there's relaxin. Um, there which is relaxin, yeah, which can... Not, helps with the birth, that you can birth the child easier. But that actually sticks around for a while, even with um, breastfeeding. I think it was that one, but something anyway. Yeah, and once you finish breastfeeding, well, things like can lack. improve. Uh, Maybe something else. Yeah. I'm not sure if either prolactin or progesterone have. I will pop notes in the show notes when I remember because it has completely yep. escaped me also. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, I'll pop the notes in the show notes about that but yeah hormones do play do play a part in the laxity of our tissues mm. yeah that yeah but um are you still breastfeeding at the moment as well yes and i always intended to breastfeed for a long time yeah so um Until he decides otherwise wasn't very helpful like maybe in quite a long time things will improve naturally but yeah. there's a long time before then <laughs> So, yeah. So you, um, so COVID hit. Um, you did the pessary for a bit. 
And then yeah. did you go back to the physio after then? I did. Or was that a phone one? Somewhere in there, go back to the, the pelvic physio. Yeah. And um, she checked how it's going with symptoms. Um, and I was going really well there. So she talked about sort of extending the exercises a bit. Okay, um, what does that entail? Mm, um, getting into the habit of making sure that I'm tightening my pelvic floor when I stand up, because that's an action that we do a lot. It and is. So getting yes. automatic yeah. um, means there'll be lots of practice. Um, and also, initially she advised me to do the um, exercises lying down. I always did them sitting up because that fitted into my day better and I rem remembered to do them. Yeah. Um, but yeah. just talked about it. can also do them standing up and that's just that bit, bit harder so it works it a bit stronger. Um, yeah, that was the main thing and just success story. And so she just charged me. Oh. Yikes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it was... Maybe you could try these while going from sit to stand. Think you can do that? Yeah, okay, see you later. Kind of thing. Yeah. Huh. I was expecting more to that story, actually, with, with the physio, mm. but there you go. I suppose they only they have limited resources when yeah. they're through the hospital. I'm guessing yeah, through yeah. the hospital if it was a referral. Yes, it was. Yeah. Yeah. So at that point, is that when you came and saw me? Uh, yes. Yep, there yes. wouldn't be there's nothing else. No. Um, and then yes, so I saw the our my Kegels program. and Cake. <laughs> saw the Kegels and Cake workshop thing first. And yes. that sounded good to just talk about it more, learn about it more. And it sounded like quite a friendly environment with cake as well <laughs> it's got to be friendly rather than you know a doctor's appointment and a doctor's surgery and yeah. you've got your small amount of time and then you're out and you've forgotten what you want to say <laughs> yeah you've got kind of 15 minutes to spill it all out and then you're out the door yeah yeah um so i went along to that and yeah, I did. I really enjoyed that actually. Um, okay. Just learning a bit more, talking around the topic um, to broaden my understanding of things. And yeah, introduced to the idea of the Every Woman course. Yeah. And I liked the sound that it worked on um, everyday movements so that it was just something that you're doing all the, all the time, every day, rather than remember to do your exercises every day forever um, yeah. yeah 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 so how did how did that feel when you rocked up to that first session compared to what you've been doing before um it was i think we were we were all i think there's a little bit of lying down but we're all standing up, weren't we? Yeah, yeah. Um, it definitely helped starting that course with the confidence that I knew how to do my Kegels and knew what it felt yes. like from yeah. the pelvic physio checking. And that's it. Um, I want to just make a point there as well that when there is something like a prolapse or you're, you need kind of that extra help to get connected first then the every woman course isn't quite right something before like seeing a physio or doing a one-on-one -on -one more bespoke stuff is a good stepping stone and then the every woman course yeah once you've got that connection you can understand that that lift is happening then mm. then the every woman course is the right way so yeah i think you you kind mm. of had the right stepping stones in place to get there yeah yeah at no point did you look like a possum in the headlights. No. <laughs> yeah. Um, and 
one interesting thing starting the course was finding that, I guess with all the, the movements as well, what I noticed most was the release of the pelvic floor, not the tightening. Whereas when I'd been doing my exercises before, I'd focused on the tightening. And yeah. Um, yeah. And we so can get that so was hung up on the tighten, 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 can't we? <laughs> that we kind of forget yeah. that, oh, we've got to let it go as well. Oh, it mm. doesn't go both ways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I actually enjoyed hearing you say that actually during the sessions. Yep, there's the relax. It's like, yes. <laughs> Tick. We're winning. We're winning. Because if you can feel the relax, you had something mm. that was up. To relax yeah. in the first place, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, so then going through the course, uh, it was a lot of fun, very interesting when we really started to link it through to my everyday actions. And yes, started to, I started to see that connection more and more. And make that link and think about it more consciously in my everyday life more and more. Mm. Um, and now I do think about it a lot. I'm playing with my son and breathing out at the right times and feeling the release and <laughs> things like that. That's fantastic. And, yeah. And recognizing when the action is like one of the exercises that we did in class even yes. though it's just play with my son or something like that. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, now he'll be a lot heavier than when you first had this, yeah. noticed the symptoms and you were picking up say a four kilo baby and now you're picking up a 10 kilo yeah. toddler. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a big difference. That's an extra six kilos. And yeah, Imagine if you were in the same situation back then, still mm. lifting him. How does it feel now lifting him, lifting a 10 kilo child to lifting a four kilo child? Now you know and understand your body a bit better. Um, it's just a, a normal part of my day and um, it's, it's quite comfortable. I know I do because he loves being held, um, so I know I do um, at times some quite um, sort of challenging stuff for my body, but I know how to do it properly, um, whereas back when he was newborn or just a little bit after and things, sometimes walking him around, just even my arms would feel tired, and I sort of thought, oh my gosh, Babies, kids don't walk for a long time. It's much <laughs> yeah. heavier. Yeah, well, you I do, do get that. stronger well, overall, <laughs> don't you? Yeah. Yeah, so overall, and um, yeah, even though he is up and moving, um, he still loves to be carried, and I know how to do that properly and, and have the confidence that I'm doing it properly. That's, um, that's such an important part. Yeah. Would you yeah. say that you have, as well as the confidence, you have the awareness? So if, if something if something went a bit, like you felt more of a downward pressure, you know what to do to mitigate that? Yeah, I would. I, even though I could feel my pelvic floor doing the right thing at the start of the course, mm. at the end of the course, I could feel it so much better yeah um, yeah um much much better defined um yeah so it's another helpful thing from the course that um yeah that developed so much yeah that's wonderful that is really really good because i know just your journey to getting here oh my goodness that so many women I have so many women would just go to the midwife and go, Oh, this doesn't feel right. Have her go, Oh yeah, it's fine. You'll get over it. And that'll be it. 
Mm. They'll, they'll just they'll just carry on their life and go oh yeah until something falls out or something something <laughs> worse happens mm. and yeah i just applaud you for doing that and fighting for yourself and going to somebody and going to somebody else and going to somebody else until you got to where you needed to be mm. because yeah. yeah so many people just don't do that yeah and You've mentioned it. Have you mentioned it to your coffee group since? Um, yeah, so once I had been to see the pelvic physio the first time, mm -hmm. I was starting to feel, well, I, I had a lot more information about things and yeah. I was starting to feel more confident about it. And she had probably said a bit about how common it is and things and even though I'd felt completely alone except for my grandmother's story yeah um, which wasn't proper <laughs> wasn't a comforting story. I, I mean yeah no so one of the mums and bubs groups that I was doing I think had a uh, might have joined with another group or something because we had a bit of a recap of birth stories later on and someone made the comment of there's no perfect birth yeah and someone in my coffee group said, ah, oh, except for Hazel's. Uh, and <laughs> you're like, read, oh, actually. Oh, actually, actually, there is an extra bit, like an extra chapter to my birth story now. It started mm. off perfect and now it's, yeah. And I explained at that point about the prolapse and what it felt like. And um, a bit about that. Um, because I, I, which I had been waiting to tell my coffee group, I wanted to tell them about it yeah. because we all shared so much. I found a little bit fraudulent about my <laughs> perfect birth story. <laughs> so I wanted to come clean about that. Yeah. <laughs> but also it was such a relief when I found a friend who had the same experience. And you were still vindicated, eh? It's like, oh. Yeah yeah not alone and so yeah i'd been waiting until i felt comfortable to tell my coffee group so that they knew so mm. that if any of them had it as well or if any of them had it in the future yes. that it was that little bit less would be that little bit less scary because they knew someone else who had had that they could talk to me or they could just know my story yeah um, did anybody come forward? Um, someone did say, I feel that literally right now. And had thought it was to do with um, tearing and things. Right. And just how it was healing. Yeah. Um, so I don't know how that eventuated. She was going to go and see the doctor, her doctor. Yeah. But um, I, I don't know where that led. Um, but just, have, just sparking that thought yeah in to get it, it not to just assume it, it is just normal and we'll be fine yeah just to get it checked just to know yeah yeah oh that leads me on to my final kind of roundup actually um what what would you say to anybody who might be noticing symptoms like um a tampon falling out type symptom or actually physically not being able to put in a tampon that's another one or any kind of symptoms that might feel like it is a prolapse what what would you say to the women listening um i would say don't be scared there are things that can be done go and see your doctor and start the process it is a process it takes a little while but yeah, there's different ways. You don't, people mention surgery, you don't have to jump straight to surgery. There are other ways mm -hmm. and that you can try. And yeah, so different things to manage it and improve it. And just there's, yeah, the pelvic physio and the, when I was getting the uh, pessary fitted and checked on, some really, really lovely medical professionals who are used to dealing with this and know how to but um 
and yeah and then even even if you've gone to the doctor and had referrals just keeping an eye out for anything else like um the every woman course and everything that came along i wasn't looking for it it popped up on facebook and um caught my eye and so that that wasn't even something which i was advised to by the doctor or anything yeah um so just trying different things and it it can can get better and different avenues towards that yeah no that's great that is great and oh final final um plug for the every woman course what would you say about anyone thinking about Mm -hmm. doing doing that course if they've seen it pop up on Facebook what would you say to those women go along give it a try um it's really made a big difference to me and um uh yeah really helps my everyday life and yeah help me understand my body better yeah yeah because that's it that's it it's it's not just doing 10 long squeezes 10 quick squeezes and that's it and seeing if you can do it standing up um it's about so much more and making sure that you can move and have a fully functioning pelvic floor at the same time (laughs) which yeah, yeah is fantastic oh and i wanted to say one thing to the people listening um if you do have trouble if there's a really long waiting list wherever you are for a referral there are private pelvic floor physios and i do have a list on my website which i'll pop in the show notes yes i just want to say thank you again because this has been so powerful to hear because i haven't experienced the products myself but i've heard other people's stories and just coming on and sharing is so wonderful and i just Mm. thank you from the bottom of my heart for agreeing to come on and yeah that is it i mean yeah i have nothing more to add but is there anything else that you would like to add before we finish if we've missed anything um no i'm just um i'm very pleased to come on and share my story so others can hear it understand and learn from it if they need to fantastic Mm. wonderful well thank you again hazel for joining me and yes if anyone has any questions they're more than welcome to get in touch with me and i can point you in the right directions for all of those different avenues that hazel mentioned so thanks again bye Thank you for listening to the Women's Wellness Podcast. For links and show notes, please visit www.connecthealth.fitness forward slash podcast. I would love for you to subscribe to the channel so you get notified when we release our next episode and please share with anyone who you think might benefit. Thank you again. I look forward to seeing you soon.